Um, that high ground isn't really good as McCree. For one, you can get flanked easily uh, when they go by a hotel. Also, any flanker has a small health pack, which drastically lowers the chances of you winning a duel. And if the enemies push past the statue, there isn't really a way for you to fall back when they capture the first point. Right here, you are standing too far back. If Mei or Roto get a pick, you can't really support them. Also, you are outside of your effective range when aiming at the choke, meaning that you won't deal much damage. Um, this was really funny. How did you know that Sombra was coming there? The position right here is a lot better. Uh, for one, you deal more damage because you're closer. However, you can also flashbang people and protect your supports. That shot right here needed to be either a headshot or a find the hammer. Right here, your team got a pick on the enemy Mercy. Uh, you really need to capitalize on that instead of staying so far back dealing no damage. Right here, you actually walk past the choke with enemies in front of it. Usually this is suicide and you should really not get into the habit of doing that. Um, in case you are wondering, the reason your team needs you at the choke is because for one you need to DPS the Reinhardt shield, since you are one of the DPS, and number two you can cancel the Reinhardt shield using a flashbang, which allows your Roadhog on your team to get picks, which is really important. You should never flashbang someone uh, frozen by mail, and when you uh, stun a tank, you should always go for the fan the hammer as long as all the shots will hit. Right here, Mercy stands like 5 meters in front of you. You really don't need to flick her. Um, you did get a headshot, but you don't really have to go for the inconsistent flicks. It's more of, of a reactionary shot. Uh, right here, you aren't with your team. If you were on the point, because remember they called out that someone was on the point earlier, you could have saved Mei by flashbanging the Roadhog. However, instead you threw your flashbang at Mercy or Lucio. Uh, you actually managed with the Lucio, but no one could really follow up on it, so you wasted a 10 second cooldown. Right here, you can see the Res Rotog entering the building to the right. However, you still walk backwards towards the Rotog, which leads you to get hooked. Uh, if you would have paid attention, then you could have seen that the Rotog was in the building. In conclusion, for the first point, you seem to have problems with taking down Farah as McCree, um, which should be your primary job. In situations like that, it would actually be wiser to swap to Soldier to guarantee that she goes down without you dying. Keep in mind that if you hadn't died to Roadhog, you may have killed someone with your ultimate, which you still have up. If you took high ground properly, that alone would probably have been enough to ensure that the point stays defended. Uh, try not to flick so much, especially not at slow moving targets or targets that move predictable. Uh, tracking in those mid cases is a lot more consistent. If you check the kill feed, you can see that one of your teammates dies to Roadhog which doesn't mean that you should walk behind the enemy team and risk your own life as well too. Um, you actually see that the enemy Rotok hooks you, so your team now has to fight a 5v6 for a flank that couldn't have worked anyways. Around 30 seconds later you're back with your team, which means that your team had to play a 5v6 for the entire duration because of your flank. You tend to tunnel vision a little too much. Um, it was correct of you to try and go for the Pharah, and you also had a nice headshot, but keep in mind that you need to stay behind your tanks. The only teammates who stand behind you are your supports. If you can't really see your tanks or other DPS, then you are too far up as McCree. Uh, if you stood behind the tanks, then Rotok couldn't have hooked you. Okay, let's do a little bit of math. So in this situation, you get hooked by Rotok, which costs you maybe 30 seconds. Uh, you killed the Pharah, which costs them around 20, because the spawn is uh, closer and also she's more mobile. And then you died again for probably another 30 seconds. So you lost 30 seconds and the enemies lost 20 seconds. So that trade wasn't really worth it. Uh, always try to ask yourself the questions, is the risk I am taking worth it? If the answer is no, then you shouldn't do it. So essentially the enemies got the second checkpoint with you having no impact aside from killing Farah, which was too late anyways, and you fed the enemies at least 400 HP of all charge. And you didn't gain any since you already had it anyway since the first point. Uh, here you get a little greedy. Um, behind you is a ledge and Lucia was locked on, in this case you should just shoot. Uh, you could have had one kill and survived, but instead you got none, and you died, and you also wasted your ultimate, and you gave the enemy Lucio tons of ult charge. So don't get greedy with your ultimates. If you can get a kill, then just take it. Uh, right here you switch to Soldier, which is actually a really good decision, because it allows you to have a bigger impact on the enemy team, especially the Pharah. Uh, right here you can see the Pharah in the top right, but it doesn't seem like you actually notice since you turn around and look around and don't shoot at her. Yeah, right here you are standing in the middle of nowhere. Um, you are flanking again, which isn't really good. Your team actually has a Reinhardt, so instead of flanking, you should just stand behind it and take advantage of that. Uh, don't jump around so much. It makes your movements extremely predictable, which sucks against good aimers. And if it's a habit, you can try to rebind your jump key in order to not accidentally press it when you don't need it. Uh, right here is actually a really good choice to ult. Uh, you got to pick on Fera, and you realize that she's using your ultimate. You can further increase the advantage that your team got, so that's really good. 
Uh, regarding that ultimate, you already got the enemy Lucio ultimate out, so that's really really good and that means that your ultimate did a lot. Uh, right here you don't really seem aware of your HP. You have less than 70 HP, which means that you are in the one shot range for most characters. So you definitely want to wall back and uh, use your E or take the health pack behind you. Um, keep in mind that you're a soldier, you don't need to run towards the enemies while shooting at them. Uh, you're just going getting closer and thus uh, getting into a riskier position. Um, right here in that ultimate you could have actually just finished the Rotog and the McCree, they were super low HP. However, instead they survived and you use your ultimate for killing the reaper only. Uh, right here, don't jump on the payload and expose yourself. You can just stand behind the Reinhardt shield. Uh, he's probably tearing his arrows out and contemplate switching because you don't really take advantage of his shield. Right here, this is actually the perfect moment for you to use your ultimate and get a lot of kills. However, sadly you didn't use it. Right here, you stand miles ahead in front of the Reinhardt shield again and you will eventually get hooked. Uh, if he could aim better, then you were dead, and the enemies could probably finish just because of that pick. Uh, also, you already have your ultimate, so you weren't even getting ultras from risking your life by standing in front of the Reinhardt shield. So just, like, stay behind the Reinhardt shield. Uh, right here, that's actually a really good play. Uh, you see that the Reaper is getting picked off again, and you follow that with your ultimate in order to get another pick. That won you the round, or at least prevented them from uh, finishing. Uh, right here, one of your teammates says, We don't need speed boost at the moment. Yes, yes you definitely need a speed boost at the moment on King's Row first point attack. And yes, no one picking Lucio on the team will be an enormous handicap for you. So you should have called him out on that, you really really need a Lucio. Like there's a reason he is like the most picked character in the game. Um, you should use your right click against the Reinhardt shield, not your left click. Also you play with the Reinhardt, so again stand behind his shield. Uh, Zenyatta made the same mistake and he died and thus wasted 15 seconds of your time. Right here, this position is way too offensive considering that your Zenyatta just died. Also, you're an easy target for Rotocox from up there. One thing I noticed in general in this gameplay is that you don't really talk a lot with your team. Now you can't hear the voice chat because I muted it. Um, but you should definitely like, focus on communicating a bit more. Alright, never drop down first. There's absolutely no reason for you to drop down first. You got hooked by the Rotok, and if it weren't for your own Rotok counterhooking and saving you, you would have just sacrificed the entire push and wasted like 15 to 20 seconds of your team. Uh, always wait for the tanks to drop down first. As McCree, you basically want as many teammates in front of you to just soak in all that damage and soak in all that CC. You getting Rotok hooked is really, really bad because if you die, then your team loses out on a lot. Uh, one click little thing to say as well you seem to hesitate a lot with your McCree ultimates. There are a lot of situations where you could easily get one or two kills, but it seems to me that you kind of try to wait for the big plays or, you know, for that perfect moment. Getting one or two kills is more than enough in most situations, even one kill. Right here, as soon as you hear the May ultimate, just roll out of there. Also, they wasted a lot of ultimates and you are like 15 seconds away from spawn, which is really, really good. Um, also, you should have hit those headshots on Ryan, then you may not have died, but Again, aim just comes with time, so don't worry too much about it. Right here, you can see that Rotok hits Mercy right in front of your eyes. That's not a sign for you to chase him. Like, that's not a duel that you're going to win 1v1. Right here, you get Diva out of her mech. Um, and for some reason, you don't use her flashbang to kill her faster. She is like on the payload for all this time and just contests it, meaning that you don't get to push it. And she almost got back into her mech, so just use your flashbang a little earlier, don't hesitate so much. I just noticed that you kind of get a ping spike here into the triple digits. I don't know what's going on here, but I think you know yourself that that's not very good. Okay, right here you try to flank again. Keep in mind that McCree is not a flanker. His job is to protect his teammates from flankers and to get picks. Also a quick little disclaimer. In this entire 14 minute game you use your ultimate I think only once. And the only thing that achieved was you being pushed into oblivion by a Lucio. If you use your ultimate more often, then you will get more results, and it's not like it takes long to charge up. Stop waiting for the perfect moment, like, it, it won't come. Okay, so just as we talk about it, you actually decide you use your ultimate again. But you repeat the same mistake you did the entire game. Stand behind the Reinhardt shield. If you stood behind the Reinhardt shield instead of on the payload, like a turkey dinner, then Roger couldn't have hooked you, which means that you could have charged your ultimate and shoot. I want you to have a look at the soldier. He gets hooked and he dies. And like, five seconds later, for some reason, you try to peek the Rotog, and guess what happens? You get hooked, and you die. So you saw your teammate make a mistake, and you didn't learn from it. I don't know if it was an accident right here, but 
you hear and see Maze Ultimate. However, instead of rolling outside of it, you roll right into it and you get frozen. Keep in mind that you should throw your flashbang over Reinhardt's shield, not uh, against it, so that you can cancel his shield. Right here, you tunnel quite hard on the May, which like almost kills you. Um, you did get her after all, but that was super risky and if it weren't for that headshot at the end, she would have survived. Okay, I want you to look at the next few seconds. They are a complete mess. Okay, so May puts her wall up, you know, you try to peek through the right, your Reinhardt gets charged, okay, maybe you could have blocked it. Now you see the Diva ultimate and you start to panic. You stay behind the Reinhardt shield, and for some reason right here, you just walk straight past the May, straight past the Diva. You roll into the team, you're like, in the middle of everything, you have no idea what's going on. Somehow you get the May, and you know, you try to flashbang the Diva, but you're so, like, out of focus that you don't even hit her. This was the most uncoordinated fight that I've seen in a long time. As McCree, you want to stay outside of the fight, not inside it, because it just disorients you and it makes it harder to aim if the targets are close at you and are moving super fast. Um, here, your Reinhardt uses his ultimate, which is a great opportunity to follow up with your ultimate. Again, you're kind of holding on to it way too long for the perfect moment, but the perfect moment was like a little bit earlier. Now you eventually use it, but you could have just used it when Reinhardt ulted. Also, if Roadhog would have hooked you, uh, you would be dead with your ultimate wasted. This is also another reason why you maybe should ult a little earlier. Right here you can see and hear the enemy soldier using his ultimate. That is usually a very good sign for you to take cover and not like run in front of it. Right here you stand on the payload again, completely vulnerable. You're basically asking the enemy team to kill you. Also, the fight was over anyways, just look at the kill feed, there's no reason to waste anything. Okay, so now this is close to the end of the game. Um, you are like, up there you're just way too far from the enemy team to deal any damage. Also, you're doing absolutely nothing for like 10 seconds here. You're just, you know, like right there you're tickling them a little bit, but now you like look into the air and like, oh, maybe I'm going to do something, I just stand around a little bit. Like, you aren't doing anything, you have your ultimate, just drop down earlier, do something. Um, you're going to drop down in a couple seconds, but it's too late. Just look at the kill feed, man. Like, three of your teammates already died, and then you drop down. Now, obviously, Lucio pushed off the payload and everything, but if you have had gotten the overtime, the enemy team could have just killed you because they had a pick advantage. Okay, so in conclusion, like, your aim is completely fine, you know. Uh, that's That's not the issue. What you really need to work on is, for one, your positioning. You really need to work on standing behind the Rhino Shield and taking advantage of that. And also, try not to get, like, don't wait so long with your ultimate. Your ultimate charge is really, really fast. And if you don't expect yourself to use your ultimate, then chances are the enemies won't expect it either. But if you give them so much time to, like, look at you and expect what you're going to do, then they can just react to it, you know, maybe cancel it or whatever, which isn't really good. Just just use it as soon as you see, oh, okay, you know, maybe I can get a kill here. My team is alive, we can get a pick. And then after that, most of the time, if it's a 6v5, your team actually does the rest. So definitely work on standing behind the runner shield and definitely work on, you know, being in effective range and not delay your ultimates for so long. Uh, I hope you liked the VOD review. If you have, like, any more questions, just, like, send me a message either on Patreon or, you know, you got my Discord. Just message me, maybe we can talk about it. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your patronage and also for sending the vote